Your source for everything paranormal. Para X. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. everyone this is jerry with the calling along with kimberly juarez and willow le marchand how you girls doing ladies babes (laughs) (laughs) whoa this went down the rabbit hole (laughs) 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 exactly and uh, i just got some big news we uh, brought another person on to my team supernatural investigators of minnesota we brought on Kate, caitlin um oh shoot i had her name correct makatange oh wow uh, is on to our team yeah that's a thirty thousand dollar last name right yes, there it is that's you a big yep <laughs> you guys know what that means no. 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 Uh, neither do I. I thought maybe you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what my last name means, Jerry? Le Marchand? Yeah. Um, something dirty, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's that kind of show tonight, Jerry. Jerry <laughs> no, actually. Actually, it, it means the wicked. Really? Yeah. yeah. Francis for the wicked or the villain. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I'm not, it was part of a, a magic sh- business that I was the manager of. So I changed it to Le Machant. Wow. That's pretty well, smart. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and Kimberly, what does Juarez mean? Oh, I don't know, Jerry. Tequila <laughs> That's drinker. That's a married name. That's a married name. So yeah. I don't have no clue. Tequila drinker. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our guest tonight is Lee Terry Brown, and Lee, do you, is Lee okay, or do you want to be perfect. called? Okay, Lee's perfect. Okay, great, because I always blow trying to say your name. <laughs> That's okay. It's what Lee is Triana? Lee, Tri- Lee Triana. Lee Triana. Yes. Oh. Lee Triana, and it means to make and bless a family. It's Polynesian. So. Oh wow! Okay. My mom's from the Philippines. Oh, wow. Okay. She's part, awesome. uh, Hawaiian. She's Samoan. She's, I'm sure she's got a little Chinese and Japanese in there and, and Filipino, Spanish, you know. And then her mother's part Iroquois. So she's just don't piss mama off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Everything. <laughs> I looked mine up one time and AIRS stands for moron. No. <laughs> I don't. No, I don't get it. I don't see the whole point of that. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> so terrible, Jerry. <laughs> oh, so now you've been into the paranormal for like years and years and years. Yeah, ever, forever. forever. <laughs> when ever, did you? <laughs> when did you first have an interest in it, or? Well. um... I was raised in the paranormal. Here, let me show you my book. Hold on. I just got a shipment in. It's called Family Spirit, Five Generations of the Supernatural. And so uh, the first memory that I have, of course, my mom and my grandmother and my father have told me over the years things about, you know, that I've done, I've, things I've seen, waving at people that aren't there, that nobody can see. This is my great-grandmother. Her name is Eugenia Still. And um, she started doing paranormal investigation in the 30s. And um, this is my grandmother, Virginia Scott. She's 96 now. 
and that's my grandson my son her grandson when he was he was little he's 19 now and that's my grandfather okay and all of this is in the book so i hope that you guys will take a look at it but we've been doing paranormal investigation like i said 30s and 1930s 1940s and those cases um after we all got together with this generation of paranormal investigators and we've gone back and redone those cases and we compare notes and we compare tactics and we do like um, history research and that kind of thing and we talk about what we've experienced and um, it, I talk about my first time seeing a full body apparition and, and how I interacted with it and then I talk about my daughter and when she had it. So I have a totally different perspective from my side of things and then being on a mom's side and experiencing my child experiencing it. So I tried to put those two stories together within the book. It's not sequential, but it's uh, there's cases all through. It's pretty fun. It was a lot of fun. My next book comes out in May. And uh, I'll have my big, Bigfoot... Uh, I have two Bigfoot experiences, so I'll be putting gotcha. those out there. So, well, hold on. Before you start talking about those, I want to know about Grandma. Like, okay, <laughs> Grandma, how long has she been – when did she game it, you know, all of a sudden? You know, for some reason, I look at people that were back in the 30s and stuff like that, that they never even thought about anything about ghosts and stuff like that. Well, what happened, uh, she was living in a haunted house. And she could, my grandmother told me this, I mean, just, it hasn't been long ago at all. Uh, this is fresh information, because I. Uh, oh, you froze. Where did all this come from? Uh-oh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, okay. now I can. So uh, I said, you know, where did all this start? And she said they lived in a house that was haunted, and a spirit was in her bedroom and was blocking her from getting out of the bedroom door. And she was, my grandma said she could hear stomping around, stomping around, stomping around. And she said, what is mother doing up there? And she heard her mother shout and stomp around, stomp around. And finally, she came down the stairs and she said. Oh, yeah. right at the Brandy. cliffhanger. Slam okay, the hold yeah. on. What did, okay, hold on, hold on, so, hold on. What did your mom <laughs> say? Because you blanked out again. Oh, no. Uh, he said. She said, I told him I had to go to the bathroom. He better let me out. And she slammed the bathroom door. And my grandmother said she sat there, you know, and looked over. And he, she came out and said, Mom, what are you talking about? She said, there's a damn ghost in my bedroom. And he didn't want to let me out the door. And I told him he had to because I had to go to the bathroom. And he moved so I could get out. And that did it. She said, I want you to see him. I know he's here. He's the man that used to live here. And um, that started it. They started trying to speak with him, and then there are other people that started seeing things, and um, it just got worse and worse. You know, um, a lot of things happened during that time. Can you hear wow. me? Yes. No, I can and hear you. A lot of things happened during that period. You know, it was during World War II, and, you know, that's a lot. That's fertile ground. That's fertile ground for a haunting people are doing without there's rations there's war people dying uh you know not knowing what's happening to your loved ones women going to work that never worked before the stress level you know um it's pretty serious you know and so that was just fertile ground um have you ever heard of the hat man oh yeah Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, my I really grandmother... don't believe in the hat man to be honest but go for it sell yeah, well, me well the um, my grandmother and great grandma grandmother had an experience with the hat man, and um, they didn't Actually, know that's what it was. Tell everybody what the hat man is, so that people that are listening will know exactly what you're talking well, about. Well, we have a theory about the hat man. I'm not real sure what everybody else thinks. Um, a lot of people, I've heard a lot of different stories that he may be. Um, a death angel, a demon, a reaper. You know, most of the times when you see the hat man, you might not live to tell the story. Uh, I know someone that saw the hat man and shortly, I mean, moments after he got hit by a car, you know, stuff like that. And majority, so uh, it's majority children who see the hat man. So I've seen him when I was little. So you did see him. Okay. Yep. So 
um, in my story with the book, which I do hope everybody will take a look at it. It's on Amazon. Um, it's called, you know, I, I can, I'll do a shameless plug later, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, the hat man's for them, uh, they had just moved into the mill village. Okay. Um, Gigi, she was very sick. And, and so she was trying to get a job at the mill and, and the textile mill. And they were living in the mill village. And a mill village is when um, the textile mills during that time built small homes in a big village, like in a big neighborhood um, area. And the different sizes depended on your status inside the textile mill. The um, super, uh, what do you call it? supervisors lived closer to the mill and their houses were a bit bigger. And it was usually a single dwelling home brick. And um, so, you know, they had just qualified to get a mill home. And it was a really big deal for these two ladies with the, you know, the father out serving his country. And so um, they were out and uh, Mama Jenny was riding her bicycle. She was about nine years old. And Gigi was walking beside of her. And they're just walking through the neighborhood, taking it all in, watching people, you know, do their neighborhood, you know, thing, you know, putting the trash out and whatnot and waving at everybody. They were excited, you know. And um, she said she looked up. And there's a man wearing a coat and a hat. And um, he did not, that was not in the right season, for you know the summer that they were in <clears throat> and she said that she told mama jenny to move over and they crossed the street and when they looked up he was there again and they tried to get past him again and he was in front of them and um they went around him and he should have been past them you know behind them at the light and when they turned around he was in front of them again and he told them somebody was going to die tonight Really? He reached out with his spindly hand and touched Gigi and said, somebody's going to die tonight. And she said, I'm so sorry, but it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> and she grabbed Mama Jenny and pulled her along, and they went up the hill, and they got to the azalea bush and got behind it to look back to see if he was there, and he was gone. And uh, she she felt like energy when he touched her. She said she could feel tingling in her legs and see she had suffered from polio. So, you know, it was a big deal for her to get a job in the mill standing and being able to do the work. You see what I'm saying? So there was a lot going on for her. And but she said she could feel that power in her legs and she didn't understand why. Um, but and she felt better the next day. She woke up and she didn't have the aches and pains of waking up. She went outside, she was sweeping the sidewalk, and she was talking to one of the neighbors, and sure enough, one of the ladies, Mrs. Smith, about uh, four or five houses down, had passed away during the night. She had fell a, a drop dead in the hallway like she was going to the front door. And so we got in touch with her family, um, which, of course, this was back in the 30s and 40s, so the majority of them had passed. So that was unfortunate for me, trying to research this case. And uh, I couldn't go to the house and knock on the door to the current residents and say, hey, we think a grim reaper came up by here. <laughs> you know, we couldn't do that either. So, um, But we did investigate the neighborhood, and we investigated a house nearby. And the paranormal activity there was just unbelievable. Flashlights rolled across the mantelpiece and rolled back and turned itself on. We had a book fly across the room. I mean, the paranormal activity in that area was extremely high. And I don't know if that's why the hat man was drawn there. I don't know if because he was there, now there's paranormal activity years later. I don't know. I'm just saying this is what we've got and this is what we've noticed. And uh, I took a picture of the house that it happened at. And Mrs. Smith's youngest sons, uh, which would be her daughter-in-law, worked at the courthouse in the tax office and I was able to speak with her and she did not know much about Mrs. Smith's health because she married the youngest son about 10 years after Mrs. Smith passed. But I could talk to her. I mean, that's the closest I could get to anybody with the family now because she's an older lady. So, uh, but she did, she did talk about how it was a very sudden death that she you know everybody knew she was weak and everything, but um, she was usually not up that time of the night. 
uh, she goes to bed real early and and they were surprised that she was headed towards the front door so my grandmother and great-grandmother felt like maybe he was a, a grim reaper i don't know but he did some healing on my on my Gigi that night so who did die did anybody die that night then yeah Mrs. Smith up the street. Oh, Smith up the stro- street. Okay, I'm sorry. And I, I hated it that simple name like Smith. I was like, this is going to make me look like a, you know, like I'm lying. But <laughs> that was the woman's name. I'm not making this up. So you should have said Mrs. Juarez. <laughs> <laughs> Scared the bejeebies out of uh, Kimberly. So okay, Kimberly, I'm sure you got tons of questions. And Willow, go ahead, Willow. Oh, great. <laughs> Well, because I'm always, I'm always the first one to start. So go ahead. And I'm always got third. But okay, yeah. fine. <laughs> some of the earlier cases, you know, so um, those are some of the earlier cases. That's not one that happened to me specifically. I was seven and I had the hat, man, not the hat man, but the man in blue is my experience. That's what you originally asked me and I should have, you know. Right. Well, that's no that. problem. What's, what's, yeah. hold on a second. What's, what's, for, uh, I want to go back again to your grandmother when she started uh, being a paranormal investigator. <laughs> what type of stuff did she use? What did oh, she, yes. how did she, she do it? Gosh, you guys. Uh, I know, it was so fun. She used a compass. Oh, and yep. I've got her old compass because it would make the, the uh, mm-hmm. needle move. You know, it would make the needle move. Yep. And she used baby powder. And she used a mason jar, and she had melted wax in the bottom of it and put a candle inside so that it would be hard for the wind to blow the candle out so that it would, you know, blow the candle. More deliberate. And she had a um, a, a, a toy car Mm -hmm. that, you know, she would ask them to push it, you know, trigger items like that. But lots of times it was just... um, you know, their flashlight and the two of them. And it was, you know, a personal experience more than catching evidence, you know, tape recorders, things like that. That wasn't happening for these ladies. So, but, right. um, but they were the ones that got called. Well, um, did they ever keep a, a log of everything that they've done and some yes. of the things that they found? Did they really? Yes, they did the best they could with it. Um keeping the the record but one of the reasons why I wrote the book is because my granddaughter was born and I you know she's she's a new little baby she'll be one year old on the 22nd of December so um I don't know how much time that my 96 year old grandmother will have with her great great granddaughter and how much little Miss Charlotte will remember her so you know, I got one of those books where you fill it out, you know, all about you and the grandmother's gift to their kid. That was not, that wasn't cutting it, y'all. With, with all the different cases that she's done and things she's seen, I started writing it and said this is what it turned into. Nice. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Nice. Okay, go ahead, ladies. So I have a question about the mediumship. Mm -hmm. That seems to be a gift throughout your family. So um, has anybody ever, so it sounds like your great grandmother, I think it was that had the the bathroom experience. Is that right? (laughs) (laughs) Trying to get them all straight. Um, Mm -hmm. So she didn't seem to have fear of it. She just told them to move, but she didn't have a lot of fear of anything. (laughs) Right. And so, but when you were young, and, and this is, a, I have clients that come to me because I'm also a medium and they'll ask me, you know, how to help their child that seems to have this gift. They don't want them to be afraid, but like, I didn't have anybody to guide me. My grandmother passed away. She was the other person in our family that had the gift. In my family, it skips every generation, every other generation. Same here. Okay. So. I didn't have anybody to guide me. My mother didn't want to believe me. She didn't want to believe that I had the same gift that that her mother had. And so I'm just curious, what advice would you have to a young person if they're just starting to realize this gift? I would say that they need to trust, number one, their instinct. When they see something, they need to first acknowledge it, believe it, but then test it. That was something that my grandmother was able to help me with. My mom has special spiritual gifts, but she's nothing like Mama Jenny. 
And she's got her own thing, you know. Mm-hmm. There's the difference between being a sculptor and an artist, you know, a right. painter or something. They're just different. But uh, Mama Jenny's just incredible. And her mother was incredible. Like I said, they're all different. Mm-hmm. So um, in order to help a child, you need to discover, le- allow them to discover the gift as it presents itself and to know that the gift will change as they change. And as they start to hit puberty, things change. And then after puberty, it changes again. Yeah. And so um, you need to be able to to trust yourself, know what you feel. Um, and this is this is my normal feeling, you know, be, be get quiet and be able to somewhat meditate. I hate to use that word because that's not really something a lot of people are, com- you know, they don't, it's not familiar right. with. But just kind of quiet your mind. And if you're sitting around watching TV or reading a book, what is your natural state of mind? You know, are you anxious? Are you depressed? Are you generally happy? Do you like to giggle and play? I mean, what is your typical feeling? And then suddenly if you have a new feeling and nothing has happened to make that feeling happen in your life, you know, why am I suddenly feeling sad? I had a great dinner. I had a good day at school. Why am I sad? Now you've got to start finding it. What what has created it? If you see something, like take, for instance, the man in blue that I saw, um, he ma- he told me that I could not see him the way that he looked, that it would be too much for me, and asked me how would I like for him to appear to him, he, for him to appear to me. Yeah. And um, I went with something totally silly because I was a silly little girl. I had a, a peanut man, one of the Mr. Peanut cans by the yeah. bed. And, you know, the peanut man with the monocle, uh-huh. I, like, I want the monocle and I wanted the suit, you know, and, and I could hear him laughing. And he said, that won't make you scared. And I, I really didn't want to be afraid. Right. So I, I went with something sort of ridiculous, you know, not a peanut, but a man like that. And my grandmother used to watch those British crime no- uh, shows on TV. And yeah. I love the accent. And I thought, OK, this I'm not going to be nervous. And I looked up and there he was. Oh, wow. He, he was. Yeah. Uh, iridescent blue I could he had a three-piece suit on he had the monocle and um British he was a peanut. yeah <laughs> I'm the one that's nutty no <laughs> but uh, I was very 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 sick I'd gotten very sick and the doctor gave me something and um oh no it, I was allergic to that and so that that was really bad so um I was I was very scared I was afraid i didn't understand why i wasn't going to school for like a week because i'd gotten all of my assignments from school for the next week and i thought oh my gosh am i gonna die i can remember my tongue being swollen i remember having a terrible fever and having you know uh, whelps on my body and just it hurt to blink you know it was awful and um i was praying and shortly after i started praying the second or third day of it Um, this happened and I called him the man in blue and he sat on the side of the bed and he would touch my arm, you know, and I could feel, I was so excited. I wanted to ask him so many things, but the, the heat and not, not like fire heat, but the, the warmth, the pleasantness, the peace that came over me from his touch would put me to sleep. And I needed that because I was, I had such a high fever that I was having those dreams you know, I had a dream that an octopus wrapped his tentacles around me and I was, you know, starting to choke. But I'm sure that was my tongue, you know, being swollen, making me feel like I was choking. And then um, I had a dream I was falling. I'd wake up yelling, you know, those fever dreams that you can have as a child uh, when you've got such a high fever. So uh, I just couldn't sleep. And after that happened, I could sleep more. And I just, you know got better and better and then I would tell my mother about it and then they were leading me through it they would ask me questions what did he look like what did he say to you did he tell you not to tell anybody Um, did they have the same experience is that why Lee yes that's what I thought that was very intuitive of you Kimberly mom had the same experience mom used to have heart attacks as a child she was born with a defect in her heart Mm -hmm. And she had several, uh, I think they called them back then, juvenile heart attacks or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, she had the man in blue also. And she even called him that. And I did not know that. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. 
So interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, nowadays, like, has your kids had any kind of experiences oh. like you had? Oh yes. Oh yes. My daughter. Uh, we lived in a in a haunted house, and it's uh, in the book. It's called Bloody Thursday. And uh, the house, uh, as we lived in it, uh, it took several years, but we discovered the history after we discovered bullets, the bullet holes in the side of the house and things like that. We discovered the, the true history of not just our house, but the neighborhood. But my daughter could see a spirit in the house and uh, she couldn't talk, but she would hold her arms up to be picked up by an entity that she could see in the house that, and that I couldn't see. And why couldn't I see it? Why didn't the spirit want me to see it? Why would this, you know, why are you keeping this from me? And, and you're talking to my child. How do you discipline that? I mean, it flipped me out. Yeah. It flipped me out. And she, she would drop toys and things like that. And suddenly she'd have them in her hand. How did she get that toy? Mm-hmm. You know, right. Uh, I can remember one night something like that happened. I could hear footsteps and, you know, the only thing I had to protect myself was, uh, and the baby was a walk. I grab my walk and I'm sitting in the bed holding my baby and my two dogs trying to figure out what to do, you know. And um, finally, you know, it, it got the best of me one night. And, and this joke, this this ghost was also a prankster, a jokester. I would have a paranormal experience and then something stupid would happen. Like one night we had this paranormal experience. We heard the walking and the footsteps and I got touched in the night. And then the next day. I looked and it looked like a little kitten, a little baby kitten on uh, the front, the steps of my house on the welcome mat. And I touched it with my toe and its wings popped out and it flew away. It was a bat, a <laughs> bat on my doorstep. Oh my and I said, it just, it just kept going like that. I had a really bad, uh, really strong paranormal experience and a possum got in my heater, fell down in the HVAC system oh. and died in there. And every time the heater came on, it stink up the house. And here I am trying to find what the problem. It was terrible. I mean, just one thing after another after another. And um, finally, we got to the bottom of it. But, but Mia could see her. I really want you to read the story. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to give the whole thing away because it's um, it, it's a fun story. My husband, uh, it was just my daughter and I at first, and then he came into the picture and how he handled it because he lived in a severely haunted home. What I mean by that is it was violent. It had killed many people. Oh. And um, 32 people have died in that home. Wow. 32 yeah. people. Not good. And um, it was, uh, the house was featured in um, Paranormal Witness. Um, it's called The Coven. Mm-hmm. And I do want you to know that I have realized that not every coven is, is negative. I've got dear friends that, you know, enjoy, uh, you know, being a member of a coven. And mm-hmm. I, but the name of the show is The Coven because these are sisters that were using the house and the people that lived in it in order to stay young. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So it's one of those kinds of spells. And, um, but it, you can see it. You can go to the Sci Fi channel, I do believe, but it's called The Coven. And um, I could probably send you the link, Jerry, if you're interested in it. But um, if you could send the oh, are you on? You're not on the uh, the chat. I'll get it on there for you. I'll send you all three of them. Okay. The my son was the concept child for the ghost inside my child, episode one, season one. Huh. I'll be and, darned. Uh, he was the episode one season when it was um, called the screenwriter and the soldier. And my son was the soldier. And um, so I'll send that to you right now for all three of you. I hope you'll enjoy them. And, and these links that I'm sending you, you can, um, they're free to watch them. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So, it's almost time for break, so let's just do a break right now. And uh, so hold on, everybody. We'll be right back in about like. <laughs> hold on. We'll be back in about two minutes. If you're looking for a truly unique podcast experience, we have you covered. 
Spirit by You with C.J. Dunham airs live from the Third Coast in Southeast Texas on Tuesday and Fridays at midnight Eastern Time, covering Creole folklore and folk magic to strange paranormal activity to new equipment for the field. C.J. Dunham is a Catholic swamp witch, a devotee to our Mother Mary and the Trinity, a true believer in our Lord, the Holy Ghost, and Christ. Peace be with your spirit and the spirits by you. Those geek ladies, Sean and Victoria, from Exploring the Paranormal with Geeks Paranormal are at it again with another amazing season full of paranormal celebrity interviews with amazing guests and stories of haunted locations and so much more. You will hear it first on Para-X. Tune in Wednesday nights, 8 p.m. Central. You will not be disappointed. Hey there. I don't know if you've heard, but there's a great new radio show on Para-X. Two hosts, one hour, and too much fun. Stephanie and Heidi not only talk about the latest goings-on in the supernatural worlds, they live it. They want to hear from you. They want to help you understand and guide you. And they want you to tune in. So, grab a friend or come alone to gather around that metaphysical table with Heidi and Stephanie. If you're interested in the worlds of the unseen, tune in to The Gathering Radio Show, Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on Para-X Radio. back this is jerry with the calling screwing up once again um so if you're enjoying the show so far and or you just tuned in and you'd like to hear the first half of it you can uh just tomorrow we'll have it on the calling radio show.com and we'll also have it on our youtube channel the calling radio show and there we please if you would please uh hit and subscribe to our channel and uh, also, too, with Para-X, there's tons of good shows. You have Geeks Paranormal right after ours. Monday uh, night, uh, you have uh, Mike uh, <laughs> O'Neill with Odyssey Paranormal. And every Tuesday night, you have The Gathering with Stephanie and Heidi. Now, next week on The Gathering, it's Ag Willow's going to be on The Gathering. So. Okay. Gosh, yeah, the gathering, the gathering, the gathering. Uh, so tune in for that and see what uh, Willow's got to say. And uh, hopefully she won't lie like she does on our show. No, I'm kidding you. Oh. Uh, no, I, no, 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 no. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Ooh, she's going to get you. Put a spell on me. So, okay, so we're back with uh, Lee Brown. Now, Lee, okay, hold on a second. I, I'm going to go back again to Grandma. Go back, go back okay. to Grandma. We're going to go back to Grandma. Because what did Grandpa think about all this stuff? Grandpa's a butthole. <laughs> Grandpa was gone. <laughs> Grandpa was gone. He was gone. He was in and out of the hospital a lot, and, and he oh. wasn't really part of it. It was mostly the ladies. So, okay, so he didn't. Mm -hmm. He didn't really believe too much in it, and thought it was who a bunch of hooey or. I okay. really don't know. Now uh, I'm going to go back even further. Grandpa he... was an alcoholic. Oh, and I'm so, sorry. Okay. Yeah, and he was very abusive to Gigi, and so he just didn't exist. My my, my grandmother just she didn't act like she even had a father, so I never knew him. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Well, he does haunt the house. I know him now, right. but <laughs> he's here. <laughs> so, what about your great grandmother? Mm -hmm. Was Gigi. She... okay. All right. Gigi is the great grandmother, mm -hmm. and then what's your grandmother's name? Her name is Virginia Scott, but I call her Mama Jenny. Mama Jenny. Okay. So, your did we talk about your great grandmother and what she did? You talk too fast, girl, because I don't remember it. Yeah, okay. she uh, she started out with the candles and the compasses okay. and the she would use baby powder. 
Um, she had several cases that were very interesting. Uh, one was Mr. Dillashaw passed away. He was a neighbor, and one of the children that lived in the house after he passed kept screaming that there was a man in her house. And the, the ladies that were nearby had to watch the child because she had to work a shift. Her husband was in the war, so the other neighbor ladies who also worked in the mill, because this is the mill village, they all had to watch the child. So she'd come in from school, and they would feed her, and she would go to her house to do her homework, and they'd hear her screaming, and they'd run over there to find out what's going on. And she said, there's a man in my house. And they'd go through and couldn't find the man. And Mama Jenny figured out it was Mr. Dillashaw. And she actually had to talk to him and move him out of there so she wouldn't, he, he wouldn't scare the little girl. He's, she told him, just come over to my house. You don't have to stay over here because I know it's you. The baby, you know, the, the little girl, she's scared. She's afraid of you because she doesn't know that she can see you and she doesn't understand it. And she doesn't have her daddy here. Just come over to my house and I'll know it's you. And he did, and he stayed with her for years. He would go on investigations with her. That was her first spirit guide. It was very sweet. Mr. Delashaw was a sweet man. He wore uh, sweaters like Mr. Rogers, and he wore oh. a, like, a little like a little hat, and he smoked a cigar. And she could always tell he was nearby. She'd smell his cigar. It was really sweet. Well, how far back would you have to go be- before the first person that was interested in? It would. Uh, it would probably be, we're already at five, probably about nine generations back to the Philippines. It's far back as I can count it on my grandmother's side because my fifth grandmother, how great, 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 great grandmother was the great purple witch of the Philippines. Really? Yes. And on my father's side, um, it would be the Austin family of the Cherokee. That's on the Baker's Roll and the Dawes Rolls of the Cherokee. It would be Leela Austin and her mother and great her. It would be so that would go back five generations. They were also able to do that. So it was quite oh. the calamity when my mother and father married because it goes on both sides. My dad did Bigfoot hunts and things like that, which is why I look. I got the bracelet on you gave me. Oh yeah, you do. Was good job. Never go anywhere without it. It's my favorite. <laughs> You're and, right. uh, it's precious and you know i think of dad too when i wear it so very good remember guys if you want your bigfoot bracelet get a hold of me and i love it you know. it, it fits well it's beautiful it's well made i don't have any problem with it getting caught on things it's got good Absolutely. elastic to it yes yeah, beautiful and i love my little bigfoot <laughs> <laughs> And then also, too, you can also get it at uh, Lauren Coleman's Cryptozoology Museum in Maine. Uh, You can order it online. Uh, We also have Yetis. I need to get some from you because uh, there's several shops in Walhalla, South Carolina, that want to carry them for the Bigfoot Festival. Really? That's what I've been trying to remember to tell you. I knew if I sat here and looked at you long enough, it'd hit me. (laughs) (laughs) God help me. (laughs) I wish I could well, read the hard drive sometimes. <laughs> that sounds good to me. Awesome. We'll talk yeah, about so I'll that. I'll have to get those from you because um, the Bigfoot Festival is in October, and they, so they've already had it for this year. So you've got plenty of time, but it's October 2021 uh, in Walhalla, South Carolina. And I told them I'd like to go live with you so that we could play uh, you know, our video while we're all there so they could know what these are for. But there's uh, several shops that want to carry them. Awesome. That sounds great. That sounds great. I made um Say who loves you, dear. Oh. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I made a bunch of them for a uh another one coming up. And for the life of me, I can't remember who they were with, but they bought a bunch uh not to sell there, but to give away to their uh speakers and to some of the people that got tables and stuff like that. All but one, and I'm not gonna discuss the one that's not getting it. <laughs> oh, <Uh-oh. laughs> there's only one person that knows who that is. Are they getting uh, coal? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. They that's all they're getting. Coal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, no, Kimberly, have you heard of that witch from the Philippines? No, never heard of the witch from the Philippines. No. You know how I found out? How? Ancestry.com. Did you really? 
Wow. I had no idea. No oh. idea. And then it all kind of clicked. And I said, are you kidding me right now? Yes. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> and so you know, the purple witch. I don't um, know what it means. Y'all got to help me. Oh, I'm what looking the, it up right now while we're talking. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. I thought I was the purple witch because everything I have is purple. <laughs> I was going to say, Lil, well, you're right about well, that. If you can help me with this, baby, please talk to her. So Y'all know was, how to do mediumship, please. It was just called, she was called the purple witch of the Philippines? Her name's Victoria Bernardo. There we go. There's the name. Okay, so girls keep going on. I'm going to uh, see if you can find look anything, Jerry. Um, I had to get it from a Catholic church um, registry in the Philippines on ancestry. Oh wow! Wow, interesting. That's interesting. Her child um, had, you know, become Catholic, and but uh -huh. then put her mom's name on there. Huh. And so the. Great, 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 great granddaughter. Her email address was the purple witch at gmail.com or something like that. Really? I can't, that's not right. I don't think it's Gmail, but it was like, anyway, and I was able to speak with her. My, my DNA connected with theirs, and I saw that, and right. I went, what? And I put it all together, and uh, that was quite the day. Yeah. It took huh. a lot for me to put that in the book because I don't know enough about it. You know, he right. died in World War II. I never got to see him. I've never laid eyes on yeah. him. Now, right. he's come to me. I have spoken to him since he's been deceased. He was a man of few words anyway. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, he's come by and he's barely registered with me and on the equipment. I wanted to have equipment to validate so that the other family members could see it, too, not just my word for it. You know, trying right. to make a family member yeah. feel better. You know, you got to. Sometimes you need that extra validation, but um, exactly. yeah, he woke me up one night and uh, wanted to talk to mom, so huh. I waited till the next morning. He waited. I think he's a very handsome man. No wonder Mom and Jenny married him. But um, my dad, my dad looked like Elvis. <laughs> he did. He looked like Elvis. That's Thank Leon. you. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, yeah. he did. Yeah. That's that's my grandpa, but this one here is my dad. Yeah. Hold on, and you'll see. Oh, I only got, wait a minute, let me get a better picture. He wrestled alligators for Tarzan movies. Really? What? Oh, that wow. is awesome. Look at that. But know, that's just a little alligator. What about the big ones? Can you see this one here? See yeah. How it looks like Elvis? Yeah. And, and here he is here with Jane from Tarzan. And here, you're not going to believe this one. Do you remember the Romper Room children's Romper yeah. Room? Yeah. Yes. That's, that's me. Where am oh I? Oh, my gosh. And that's Dad with uh, whatever her name was. I can't remember it right now. Yep. You were a Romper Room girl? Yes. Yes. I was the one that was on the inchworm bouncing with the pig, the ponytails. <laughs> oh, my God. That's <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, that was <laughs> great. And, um, yeah. That was fun. That's great. And, and there's Dad. Look at that. I'll be darn. So um, wow. he's a cryptozoologist, and then my the ladies of my family were ghost hunters. <clears throat> so that's why I started the five book series nice. because I've got the memories of being a cryptozoologist's daughter. So I'm going to write the memoirs of that with those two stories for the Bigfoot Festival. So and you then, have five books coming out. Yeah, this is the first. And then the second comes out in May. It's going to take me some time to write this stuff. But, yeah. yeah and it's not going to be. She, she, Lee, you're bursting. So it's like anything you taught, you say, you can really tell the story. So it's like that. that's all coming out. You know what I mean? Good. good. I really yeah. wanted to. Well, you know, it takes a lot of, um, of, of courage to mm -hmm. try to tell a family story because Gigi and Mama Jenny – being in the era they were in, being, you know, right. the women that they were, uh, doing what they needed to do. I, I asked Gigi, well, excuse me, Mama Jenny, I said, G Mama Jenny, how did you and your mother make it through the things that you've done? Okay. How, mm -hmm. how, she said, you do it because you have to. You're courageous because you have to be. You don't know that you're being courageous at the time because you've got to do it. And I don't know if you guys knew this, Jerry. I don't know if you know, but my grandmother, who's 96, and my mom, that's 74, we all live together. Mm -hmm. And um, everybody in the house has had COVID except for me. Huh. And oh, so wow. I, 
I've been the chief cook and bottle washer and nursemaid and all of that. And everybody's recovered and everybody's out of quarantine as of today, which is why I could do the show without my mask and why they keep coming in to check on me because they know I'm very excited about getting life back to normal. So this is my celebration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, she said whenever she was going through this COVID thing, she said the hardest part about this is that this illness plays tricks on your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll, you'll just start feeling sorry for yourself. You know, things that's happened in your life, or, you know, it kind of crops up on you. Some illnesses do that. And, um, and she said, you know, you've got to just get, put your mind straight and get through it. And that's mm -hmm. how they were able to ghost hunt, you know, because they had already seen so many bad things. Right. You know, they wanted to figure out what was what. Uh, Gigi, <laughs> she carried a fire poker. Sometimes when she would go on go to places, she had a, a metal fire poker and she was about four foot nine and she weighed about 79 pounds. And if you pissed her off, you'd get that fire poker. <laughs> you know what? She was something else. She was fierce. So but uh, that was only in emergencies, I guess you'd say, or if they were investigating just the two women, you know. Right. Right. Yeah. But uh, they were something else. I hope that I can do what you know, write their stories and portray them with the, with, with dignity and, and respect because they are, they're, they're funny ladies. They really are. They're a lot like Lucy and Ethel. Is, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> then the paranormal. <laughs> <laughs> Those two. But, um, you know, just so, okay. God is unreal. Sorry. So your next book is going to be about Bigfoot. I've got two stories about Bigfoot. I've got um, a severe haunting, a case that we did. You know, just these are just cases that uh, there's no, um, like the like this one. There, it's not in sequential order. You know, th these are this is a case. This is a case. This is a case. Like my case of seeing the man in blue was in here. Mom's case will be in the next one. You know, that kind of thing. And I should have put numbers on the cases, I guess you'd say, but I, I didn't. I was trying to make it look a little bit like a uh, memoir. But So, Lee, what about your dad? Let's go back to your dad. What, <laughs> did he have a Bigfoot experience? Is oh, that why he got so then, into it or how? He had a lot of Bigfoot experiences. Um, there was a Bigfoot on the property. Um I don't know if you guys are will remember this or not, but he worked for Ross Allen at the Silver Springs Institute in as a reptile institute in Silver Springs, Florida, with the mm -hmm. glass bottom boats, and they filmed all the. Oh yep, there. yep. And um, so Dad worked there, mm -hmm. and um, he went there with his mother when she remarried. Her husband passed away when Dad was just a toddler. Um, he died of pneumonia. And uh, so when she remarried, she took dad with him, with, with them on their honeymoon. There's nobody to watch him. And so they went to the beaches over at the Silver Springs Institute. There were a lot of Boy Scouts there, a lot of other children there, a lot of, you know, kids things. If you go on YouTube, you can see different videos about the Institute. There was a Seminole tribe that had their beautiful area there. Uh, there was where they were filming the the Tarzan movies, and then they had the glass bottom boats that you could take rides through. Um, there were speakers very similar to like uh, Steve Irwin did in Australia, mm -hmm. like a zoo, and you could go through and they would do demonstrations and talk to you about the animals and you could educate yourself. So when dad was there, um, you know, he kind of fell in step with the other children there. And back then you could do that. Uh -huh. And so he ended up just disappearing with the other boys that were, you know, doing those different things, the owner of the uh, thing, Ross Allen, took Dad in. Mm -hmm. And Dad went back and forth a lot to the to the Institute over the years. And so when he married Mom, and there she was, a ghost hunter, um, they took me in the summers, you know, to see them. And I spent time with the Seminoles, and that's how I started training to be a, a, a shaman. Mm. I can okay. remember showing my mom these things, and she said, who, who taught you that? Who showed you that? So I'll be writing about what it was like working with the Seminoles. I've still got my jacket that uh, was given to me when I was little, and I've got my dad's that was presented to him 
uh, hand stitched with the the crank sewing machine that they used. I mean, it's just amazing. Can't believe the jacket lasted that long. That's some good craftsmanship, you know. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll be writing about all that and. Nice. Um, I was in a camper with my mom, and we were right on the compound at the Silver Springs Institute. And uh, on the compound, they were um, can- not campers, but trailers that were end to end to end, like a um, like a stop sign, hexagon style, you yeah. know. And then in the center of it was where everybody had, you could eat. You had picnic tables and different things, a swimming pool, things like that. And so, um, and everybody lived there. All the different scientists could stay there. A lot of mm-hmm. the families would stay in each one of the trailers as, and then go back and forth to the Institute. It was a fun time. And um, it was right on the edge of the swamp, though. But it had to be because, you know, a lot of these things were coming out of there. It's not like these snakes that were in the Institute were raised, like, in captivity. Uh-huh. Like like now, if you go to a reptile conference, a uh-huh. lot of these reptiles will eat defrosted mice. Okay. It was a theory that snakes might eat defrosted mice back then because these were <laughs> snakes that were in the wild that we caught. Right. Yeah. I can remember a time when we were having problems getting mice and dad was eating a hot dog and he was putting something, he was feeding the mice to, you know, for the, and the hot dog fell out and landed in there and uh, with the snake and um, the snake ate it. So they fed them hot dogs for a little while before we could get the, the mice back. Nice so, yeah, we were still figuring all that out. So um, uh, it's, a, it's a fun time thinking about all these things. But Dad was a pretty amazing man. Mm-hmm. And he spoke different places and he talked about wildlife and, and humans and living together and, and the ecosystem and things like that. He was, he was a flower child. <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, Dad on the Peggy Denny show. Oh yeah. yeah but, so everything's in that book. Now, uh, where can you find your book at? It's on Amazon. Okay, this is this is Mama Jenny when she was young, and this is her now. Oh. Nice looking woman. Oh, beautiful. She's <laughs> so, a man. It's on Amazon. If you look on Amazon for Family Spirit, The Origins of, just type that out, and it'll pop right up. Five Generations of the Supernatural. Okay. I would love and you guys to, to, you know, give me a review. That would be very helpful. Um, I, I really appreciate all reviews. I want to get an idea of what people feel about these um, stories. And, uh, you know, if I'm touching anybody's heart with it, because, you know, these, these are very important stories to... To our family, and I hope that I'm portraying them well. I, I pray that I am. It took a lot of courage to do this. Well, I suppose. What did everybody think about it? I mean, where everybody kind of like, okay, what are you going to be saying about me? You know, what are you going to, you know, <laughs> well, that kind of thing. I read it to them. I, I read them the story, and Gigi said, uh, "Gigi, Mama Jenny said, um, I can't believe that you're saying that I'm a ghost hunter. All thing we do is go out and look for ghosts." And I said. That's a ghost hunter. <laughs> you know, <bless> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, people would call us when they have problems, and it was usually because of a haunting. And, you know, everybody else is busy running, and we're the fools running towards it. So they'd call us. <laughs> right. That's yeah. the truth. <laughs> I put the uh, the link to your book on um, on oh, the chat oh, so everybody can take a peek at it. You're welcome. Um, get a good re- – it's – it's pretty inexpensive. I was quite surprised. I figured it was going to be more than that. So Kindle, you can get it, and it's a little bit less. Yeah, Kindle's so. like six bucks. Yeah. You get the book. It's uh, fifteen. You know, I don't set the price. I was hoping it'd be even a little cheaper. This is what happens when you're in quarantine. Okay, this is what happens <laughs> when everything shut down. I said, okay, so what am I going to do? And but so you know I what? Writing it. Would it have ever been written otherwise? I know. It would still be, you know, jottings. Well, if I had done it, then Charlie would not have this from Mama Jenny. And then, now look, after the book came out and I went to a paranormal conference and I sold two shipments of books, they just flew out of my hand. Everybody loved them. 
um, I came back and I told her how well it went and everything. She said, oh, my gosh, I'm so excited. Well, let me tell you about this case and this case. And these are cases she'd never told me about. And oh, now they're yeah. starting to come out. And I'll tell you this. If you have the new version of Word, you can go to the top right corner, and it's got a dictate button. And it's like talk to text on your cell phone. Oh, so yeah. I could hit that button and just let her talk at the dinner table, and it was her words. And I could go back, and when I'm talking about her work, it's her right. words. She, right. I, she dictated it to me. So that was a blessing. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, that's really good. You know, I'm really happy for you that you got Thank the big book, book written. I actually, oh, it's been two years now. I've been um, not really writing um, a book, but writing, you know, stuff that, yeah, okay, in a way, I guess a book, maybe one day, you know, after... Uh, a couple of family members leave this earth that I'll put it out because I know it'll set my family, the heirs family up in flames <laughs> when, they, when they read that. Yeah. <laughs> They're not going to yeah. be happy. You know, I, I wonder mean, what happened here. Yeah. <laughs> love my father, but he's very, very hard to be around. And uh, when in, if you have a bunch of relatives um, that are, um, uh, my side of the family relatives that, uh, you know, think one thing and one thing only. They right. remember him from when they were little. They haven't seen him since. And when you um, put something out, they're like, no, no, no. Lowell would never do that. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, just wait for the book to come out, people. He's 93 now, and I'm sure he's probably not going to pass till he's at least 150. You know? <laughs> so we'll see what happened here I totally get what you're saying um, luckily I didn't have to deal with uh, my grandmother's father because I understand he's a he's a turd <laughs> yep. but now look my Gigi and my and her husband which would be my great grandfather Joe, Joe is his name um, I have two houses I want you to know that they are their spirits are in the other house and they mm -hmm. still get into a fight. My son lives over there and he, he'll come over and tell me they're slamming doors again. Mom, will you come separate them? And I'll go over there and make one come over here and one go over there. <laughs> to this day, they're still arguing. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> We've, uh, I don't think, Lee, I've talked to you since I moved into this place. Or no, I was here when, yeah, okay, when last time you were on the show and stuff. We've had incredible paranormal activity in this house, or this apartment building. Really? It's, just, it's insane. Do you know the the uh, origins of where it's coming from or why? Nobody, I don't know. I don't know, because it comes and goes. Um, we'll have things like the microwave will come on by itself. A um, couple of three weeks, maybe four weeks ago, we were doing a show and it sounded like somebody was pounding on the door. The ladies heard it mm -hmm. and um, there was nobody there whatsoever. Um, what else did we have? Toilet flushes on on its own. That's tough. You can hear the, the thing go down. Oh, gosh. Um, oh, just all sorts of fun stuff. So, okay, we're down to a minute left. Oh, so, darn, Lee, it always goes so fast. <laughs> Lee, what can, how can somebody get a hold of you? Please go to my YouTube channel. It's Lee Triana Terry Brown on YouTube. And I've got a lot of my readings out there. I do palm readings and I do um, past life readings. I do healing sessions. If I'm doing somebody else's reading, I'm not going to film their reading. That's too personal. But right. I don't mind filming after the fact their response to it. And I'm also on TikTok, and you can find me on Facebook, and I'm on Minds. I'm on any social media, but uh, the book is on Amazon. And so, you know, you've got the link out there for me. I appreciate yep. it. I yep. appreciate the support, ladies and Jerry. I appreciate it so much. Oh, yeah, Definitely. no worries. Well, I'll tell you what, um, I've, this is the end of the show. Thank you to all the troops that are listening in. Thank you, Lee, yes, very, thanks. very much for coming on. Thank you, um, Jerry. Thank you, ladies. You got it. Thank you, Para. You've got two beautiful ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Sarge. You're the best. And um, remember, next week on The Gathering, 
we have Willow is going to be on their show. Make sure to tune in and uh, see what's happening. But thank you very much, everybody. Y'all have a good, good night, night everyone. and wait for Bye. Geeks Paranormals on next. <laughs>